we're going to be looking at momentum and impulse. First, let's consider a car of mass 1000 kg moving at 5 meters per second. And also consider a cannonball of mass 10 kg moving at 500 meters per second. Which of these two would require greater force to bring it to rest? Well, they'll need the same force because they have the same momentum. And that's what we're going to be looking at next. Momentum is defined as the product of mass and velocity. And this is its equation. And in symbols, momentum is given the letter P. To get the units of momentum, we use the equation. So the units are equal to the units of mass, which is in kg, times by the units of velocity, which is meters per second. So the units of momentum are kg meters per second. So what do we mean by momentum? Well, you can consider it as the unstoppability of an object. It relates to how much force is needed to bring that object to rest. So if we again consider a car of mass 1000 kg moving at 5 meters per second and a cannonball of mass 10 kg moving at 500 meters per second, well they both have the same momentum. So they both need the same force to bring it to rest in the same time. Newton's second law of motion relates to momentum and it states that the resultant force acting on an object is equal to it, the rate of change of its momentum. And we can express this mathematically by this equation where we remember delta represents a change, so a change of momentum divided by the time taken. And it's important to note that the change of momentum is in the same direction as the resultant force. F equals ma is a special case of Newton's second law of motion, and we'll see how. So from the definition of momentum, it equals mass times velocity. So if we substitute that for momentum p into the equation for resultant force, we can say then the resultant force equals the change in mv divided by the time taken. If the mass of the object is constant, so it doesn't change, we can take it out of the bracket. So we can say F will equal the mass M times delta V divided by delta T. So the rate of change of velocity equals acceleration. So we can say F equals MA. And that is true when the mass of your object is constant. If you remember from Einstein's special theory of relativity, mass increases when an object's velocity approaches the speed of light. So then this equation, F equals MA, will not be valid. However, the equation force is equal to the rate of change of momentum will be valid. So it's valid for all situations whether mass is constant or not. The impulse of an object just means it's change in momentum. So it's given the symbol delta P. So if we go back to Newton's second law of motion where resultant force equals the rate of change in momentum. So delta P is our impulse. So from this equation, we can define impulse and we can say impulse equals our force multiplied by the time the force acts. Units of impulse are the same as the units of momentum, as impulse is a change in momentum. But we can also get alternative units for impulse from its definition. So the units will equal the SI units of force, which is the Newton, times the SI units of time, which is seconds. So we can say the units of impulse can also be Newton seconds, and that is equivalent to kg meters per second. 
to change the momentum of an object so that it comes to rest, you can either apply a large force in a short time or apply a small force in a longer time so that they have the same impulse, the same change momentum. And if you used to plot the force, the resultant force acting on an object against time, then the impulse would be found from the area under the force time graph.